Hi, my name is Karthik Srinivasan, and I'm happy to have you join us on this virtual lab tour. Our goal for this tour is to give you a broad overview of the research we are working on, and hopefully some sense of what our day-to-day -day activities look like. In this first clip, you can see two members of our group, Edgar Perez in the blue coat and Gregory Moy in the brown jacket, hard at work in the lab, which is located on the basement level of the beautiful physical sciences complex on the University of Maryland campus. Edgar and Gregory are in the midst of optically characterizing nanophotonic devices by examining their response to injected laser light as a function of frequency and power. Before delving a bit further into these experiments, I want to take a step back and tell you a little bit more about what we generally work on. We're interested in the physics and engineering of nanophotonic devices in the context of quantum information science and metrology. Here I'm showing a collage of images of nanophotonic devices that we've worked on. These structures are created by nanofabrication technology and enable us to manipulate the propagation and confinement of light at the wavelength scale, thereby dramatically modifying light matter interactions relative to bulk optical systems. In general, we study both basic device level physics and also tailor devices for specific applications. Our research is built on three pillars, computational design, nanofabrication, and photonic characterization. Here's an overview of the types of projects that we've worked on recently. We have been developing integrated quantum photonics hardware, including single photon sources, entangled photon sources, and hybrid quantum photonics platforms. We're also working on nonlinear optical light sources that can coherently control and interrogate quantum systems for applications in quantum networks and the creation of portable optical atomic clocks. Finally, we're developing transducers that can connect quantum systems operating in different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum by harnessing physical processes like four-wave mixing, piezoelectricity, and photoelasticity. Moving back to the lab, here's a scan of setups and equipment on both sides of our big optical table. There's also two other tables in the lab that we're not showing. We have several setups for coupling light on and off photonic chips, and these setups are serviced by a number of different lasers, amplifiers, spectrometers, photodetectors, and electronics. Getting light on and off the chip is critical, and here's a zoom in of one of our coupling setups to show one way in which this is done. This specific chip contains ring resonators, as you can see from this image, taken by an optical microscope that sits above the coupling setup. The input fiber is connected to lasers and optical amplifiers, while the output light is photodetected and spectrally resolved. In this specific case, we're looking at a soliton microresonator frequency comb, a single pulse of light that circulates around the ring and whose spectrum is composed of hundreds of equally spaced spectral tones. One of the great strengths of being part of the Joint Quantum Institute is our access to labs on the nearby NIST campus. Much of our nanofabrication is done at the NIST Center for Nanoscale Science and Technology, a state-of-the-art nanofabrication facility which contains dozens of high-end tools needed to create nanophotonic devices, and a small cross-section of which is shown here. We also have two measurement laboratories on the NIST campus. One lab is focused on nonlinear nanophotonic devices and has similar setups as what we have on the UMD campus, but also has some specialized tools. For example, we have a new high-power narrow line-width laser system that enables access to a continuous range of wavelengths between 500 nanometers and 1,000 nanometers, which constitutes a spectral range of about 300 terahertz. One of our labs on the NIST campus is primarily dedicated to cryogenic measurement setups, where we can interrogate nanophotonic systems at temperatures around 4 Kelvin, which is often needed to reduce decoherence effects. One cryogenic system is used for experiments with quantum photonic circuits. This 4 Kelvin cryostat houses stacks of nanopositioners that enables fiber coupling to devices at low temperatures, and the types of experiments we have done include measurements of cavity optomechanical thermometers and characterization of heterogeneously integrated quantum photonic chips. We can also reconfigure the system to enable simultaneous microwave and optical probing, which we are using to help characterize new microwave to optical transducers that we are developing. This is a photo of a setup used for interrogating single solid state quantum emitters. It consists of a closed cycle 4 Kelvin cryostat that houses a high numerical aperture objective, and above the cryostat, we have both a confocal fluorescence microscope for imaging and spectroscopy of the quantum emitters. A typical use for this setup is to map the optical properties and spatial locations of indium arsenide quantum dots with respect to alignment features, information which we subsequently use when fabricating devices that enhance the quantum dot response through cavity quantum optical effects. Here are a couple of photos of an 800 millikelvin cryostat that houses a bank of superconducting nanowire detectors that enable efficient and low noise single photon counting across a broad range of wavelengths. This tool is critical to our characterization of quantum light sources and transducers. 
Finally, as is the case with the other labs I've described so far, the cryogenic measurement setups are supported by a number of laser systems, spectrometers, interferometers, and spectral filters. So that's about it for our virtual lab tour. I hope that it's been informative, and of course, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or would like to find out more. I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual open house.